Hey guys, so I've been making lots of EDH decks and I've been playing with my friends and it's been a lot of fun. We actually were up until 4 a.m. playing EDH the other night because uh, things got kind of, not with this deck, I played a five color sliver queen deck. Now it, it doesn't really have slivers, it just has combos in five colors. But anyway, I wanna go over what I think is the strongest deck in Magic for EDH. It is Brea. Now, before we go over Brea, the reason that I think Brea is the strongest is in this deck alone, you have seven or eight different infinite combos. And then Brea is the, she has the ability to sacrifice herself. She goes back to the command zone. As long as you can produce infinite colored mana, you're good. She is the sack outlet that you're kind of looking for. Um, so let's go over mana bases. Now, again, the dual lands are not necessary, but when you own so many of them, why not? Uh, you have the six dual lands for, for the colors Brayer's in. You have the six fetch lands that Brayer is in. You have the artifact lands, which will be important. I'll explain why the artifact lands are important later on. You have five of them. You have the six pain lands. So just assume that there are six pain lands. And then you have um, the six shock lands. Again, do you need the OG dual lands? Not really. I mean, it's not a high, you could definitely replace them by other lands. And then you have a few utility lands, of course. You have Tower, Pool, West, uh, Command Tower, Forbidden, Orchard, Confluence, City of Brass, Exotic, and Spiral of Industry, because you're an artifact deck. So th that's your land base. It should be pretty basic. You're a four color deck, so six pain lands in the corresponding colors, six shock lands in corresponding colors, six fetch lands in corresponding colors, six uh, dual lands, original dual lands in the corresponding colors. Um, the only color you're missing, of course, is green. Now, I guess I will go over the utility and then I'll go over the combos. Uh, these are utility cards. This is a very important card if you're playing a counter spell you want to win. Uh, I put Psychonic Rift in all my decks because it's that good. So Copy Artifact is very good. Metamorph is very good. Um, this your combo deck, so you have to protect yourself. But when you're tapping out, this deck can typically combo off turn two, turn three. Like if your opponent is does not know what you're playing, it is really easy for you to win on turn two. So this card is really good too, and one of the reasons you play red. So not much to talk about in utility. Uh, card draw or card selection. You have uh, these cards. Top is really good. Bobble, I, I misplaced my other bobble, so I don't know where my other bobble. Skull Rack is really good. Wheel of Fortune. Uh, let me explain Wheel of Fortune, why it's so good. You empty out your hand, and then essentially you draw seven new cards, or I guess six new cards replacing the Wheel of Fortune, and that's really good. This is from long-term games. The beauty of this deck is very simple. Uh, Necropotence is one of the best cards in EDH, in my opinion. You can play multiple combos in the same turn because your combos are so cheap. So let's say that you play your combo turn two and then it gets countered or something gets destroyed. That's okay. Just continue to play this game and draw into multiple combos. So they might be able to stop one. They're not going to be able to stop eight. And if you lasted, well, I guess I'm going to show you some more utility cards. But this gives you kind of card draw, card, card selection, um, scepter, and tomb, which is good for your combo with uh, the Ward Garger Dragon, Intuition, Lily, Merchant Scroll. So anytime you can tutor in a, you know, in a combo deck, that's what you should be doing. So that is your tutor suite. Now, Imperial Seal, I have a copy of that, but that's being played in my other deck. So the only big changes in this would be Imperial Seal. I did try Red Gamble, 
and Gamble was not really that good because you're a combo deck and you kind of need, you know, just you're trying to lo lower the variance, right? Now we'll get into the Mana Rocks, Diamond, Crypt, Lotus Petal, Stone, Stone, Opal, Soul Ring, Commander Spear. And that is your Mana Rocks. Very, very easy to explain. Mox Diamond in particular is very good with your deck. Uh, Mox Diamond, uh, turn one Mox Diamond is probably one of the best things you can do in your deck. The Opal is also very good. You get fast mana very quickly. All right, we'll put that up here. Uh, and now we're gonna get into combo enablers. Now in hindsight, I should have done this video in reverse of the combos, but I will explain each combo in a different video and how to change your deck. The reason I think Brayer is the best deck is because she has so many different combos available to her and it's really easy to change your deck depending on who you play. So you got uh, Staff of Domination, Again, you can draw out your deck. Ballista, you can shoot your opponents. Brood, you can deck your opponents. You have sack outlets. And that does it. So these are combo enable pieces. Not every combo needs them, but as you will see, it is a quick way to beat all your opponents very fast. All right, let's go over the combos. Uh, Foundry and Short of the Meek. So you play both of them. You sacrifice Sword of the Meek, you get a 1-1, you gain one life. Then the Sword of the Meek comes from your graveyard, attaches itself to that 1-1. Whenever a 1-1 creature comes into play under your control, you may return Sword of the Meek from the graveyard to play, then attach it to that creature, and this will create infinite mana. Because you pay one, you, you have a creature, you sack the sword, you get another creature, so you're getting infinite amounts of creatures. And if you have the iron work or a sack outlet, you're basically gonna go infinite because you go plus one. And that's how that combo works. Very simple, very easy. Okay, um, now here's another combo that's also mana rock related. Grid monolith, mana vault, basalt monolith, and power. So power artifact, the activation of target artifact is reduced by two. So that's very, very good. Um, when you reduce, you know, untapping it by two and they produce more than two mana. Well, I mean, obviously it should be a no brainer. You've just got infinite. So going infinite means again, you can shoot them down with the walking ballista if you have that in your hand. Um, there's other things you can do, of course, with infinite mana. But that's one of my favorite combos because the beauty of Brea is each of your combo pieces is actually really good independently. Uh, next, you have two creature combos. This tends to be weaker because it's, again, two creatures that don't have haste. So it should be pretty obvious that your opponent should not be too confused when they see it. But essentially, um, this second, the last ability, tap and untap blue creature you control add to mana you can make this blue target um, artifact creature becomes blue you make this blue it can now tap for two mana then spend the two mana untapping it producing the one colored mana that you want which is really important because again you are going to need lots of colored mana to play out your Brea. so Brea is well, the one thing that I, I mean, obviously she would be OP if, if she was just an artifact and then was in the four colors, had that in her roll text instead. But Brea, you're going to continue to sack her and sack her and sack her because you have infinite mana. So it doesn't matter how much, how much mana she costs in the command zone. All right, um, this is kind of a combo I like. I don't know too many decks that play it. Obviously, there's another piece that you can play into it. I think this is very surprising, and it's an instant speed combo. Meaning you play this, and then you play this. So, it's a pretty fast combo, plus you have the ability, you have fast mana, so it does make sense. To me, at least. Um, now we're going to talk about the, I guess, the next combo. There's two combos this deck is famous for, and those are the two more efficient combo pieces. 
Uh, here is a Laboratory Maniac, Jace, which is basically the same as Laboratory Maniac, Demonic and Tainted Peak. You can also deck yourself for the win, uh, meaning the Laboratory Maniac is going to win your game if you don't have a library, as is the Jace. These are the two ways that you can deck yourself because you can just call a card that you don't actually want and off you go. Um, this is a very good combo. Again, each of the combo pieces are very good upon themselves. So like Demonic Consultation is not a bad card by itself. All right, now we're getting into the two main combos. So Brea is famous for two combos and the two combos are the Salvager and the Lion's Eye Diamond. So it should be pretty obvious what's going on here. You are going to return the Lion's Eye Diamond. Um, the Lion's Eye Diamond is going to go infinite and you do get infinite colored mana because you can add one white a turn and then start adding other colors. And then that's how you get infinite colored mana. I will explain in another video, but this is the, there are two combos in this deck which are really, are I guess easier to protect but they're more known. The other combos I've shown you are less known, but they're a little harder to protect. So obviously you go infinite with this, and then you have this combo, of course, the dragon and the two anime deads or dance of the dead, which is basically like anime dead. So what do I need to say about this particular combo? Um, it's pretty good. Uh, it is very difficult to deal with, but they can graveyard hate it out. Hence why, um, so Graveyard Hate on the, your two main combos is a way for them to prevent you from winning because Graveyard Hate like Tormund's Crypt is very inexpensive and it can get you early on. However, that's why you have the other combos. Um, if they hit your Graveyard, then, and this is also why you have uh, Entomb. You have access to a lot of fast mana you have access to probably some of the best draw spells and tutor abilities. It is possible, and this is why I took 4 a.m., because I played four combos in a row. In a row. And that's how I won. So you can stack the combo, because the combos are so different from each other. Okay, one's a graveyard combo, one's a you don't have a library combo, one is a two creatures produced infinite mana combo, one is a Artifact and enchantment create infinite mana combo. Um, it's this deck uh, has so many different ways you want to build around it. Another one is Splinter Twin combo, right? Which is kind of an instant. So that's what I start off with. I start off with the Splinter Twin combo if I have it in my hand, because I know that will bait in them into using their counter spells or whatever, and then I start playing my other combos. Anyway, hi guys.